Hi, my name is Andy Hahn, and today is June 29th, 2021. And this is the 17th episode of Guided Self-Healing, Fearless Living. And today's episode is called uh, The Consequence of a Life-Centered Therapy. And there are several that I just want to talk with you all about. So the first consequence when we do healing that is centered in life is that everything is part of the process and we start with everything, not any particular thing. So we start with being and we start with life. We don't start with any aspect of being. So we don't start with our thoughts. We don't say, I think, therefore I am, or I have a cognition, therefore I am, or I uh, have a behavior, therefore I am, or I have a belief, therefore I am. We start with am. You might say, I am, and therefore I believe. I am, therefore I have thoughts. I am, therefore I have feelings. I am, therefore I have behavior. I am, therefore I'm mindful. I am, therefore I'm heartful. I am, therefore I'm bodyful, which we could talk about because what is mindfulness it is really paying attention it's about awareness and what is heartfulness it's really about a kind of compassion what is bodyfulness it's really about a way of engaging and they're all part of something more that we call being so everything becomes part of being and everything is part of life so we start with all of life which opens us to all possibilities not only for the causes of our suffering, but for the possible resolutions of our suffering. So that's the first consequence of a life-centered being the space therapy or healing, which just means to become whole, which means to remember. So healing and wholeness and remembering really are all the same thing. So let's look at secondly, what, what roles we play in a life-centered therapy. And really what I'd say is it turns everything from a top-down model to a bottom-up model. So in many kinds of healings works, we go to an expert therapist who is going to tell us what's wrong and fix the problem. In a life-centered therapy, nothing could be further from the truth. In a life-centered therapy, we start with life, all of life. And then whoever's doing who is receiving healing is the expert on life as it reveals itself to them, through them, with them. And the expert's role is to be an expert on the framework and an expert on life as best the expert can do that so that we can open to all possibilities. So I would say it's a therapist's role is to really help someone uh, bring their awareness and pay attention to what is with acceptance. I would not say a therapist's role is to give advice or to say, I know how you want to be living your life, because really that may be a coach's role from my point of view, but not a therapist's role, not a healer's role. A healer is to help you become whole, and that's all a healer is to do, which means a healer is to help you find everything and to deal with it with acceptance. And in a like manner, uh, everything gets reversed in terms of uh, knowing. So we usually start with the top-down model, which is that the head knows everything, and uh, nothing could be further from the truth in my experience. You know, what I would say is the place that really knows is we could say our bellies or our gut, because the belly knows just viscerally, it just knows what's true for us. And it knows, therefore, what's important. It just knows. It's a felt sense. So once we know, then we can move up to the heart. And the soft voice of the heart basically says, now that we know what's true for us and what's important, now, given that, what do I desire if I was really living in alignment with my deepest passion? And then the head is there as a servant to say, okay, now that we know the truth, 
and we know what we desire, maybe we can be discerning about how we might bring it into the world, at which point we go back to the belly again that starts engaging, you know, and making it actually happen. So, um, the fourth idea of a life-centered therapy is there is no such thing as locality or time. Everything is happening in the here and now. Now that leads to some very interesting things. First of all, it says that all information is available right now. The information doesn't travel. And we talked about the idea that who we are, this mystical idea that we are cells in a body called life and that each of us on the surface is a particular, but underneath it, we all have the same template. And if we could tune into the template, we'd be tuning into all of life and all information happens simultaneously. It's why we can clone Dolly, you know, from one cell of a sheep, because it's not that the information travels, it's the information is already here. And everything, anything happens anywhere in the universe is happening to us simultaneously, which leads to the interesting idea that we're all the same life force, which is why if I really paid attention from the inside out, I'm not just Andy. I am the template, so it means I have the same life force as a tree or an ant or anything. It's all available to me. And since everything is happening in the present moment, this is really important uh, in the world of therapy, there's no such thing as regression. Now, most therapies, they say, you know, we're going to regress you to an earlier time. And therefore, they say, you know, um, I'm bringing the client back to age two or back to another lifetime, the idea being that they're going back. And clearly, if that's the case, then a client needs to be resourced because if you're going to go into some kind of horrendous abuse that happened at age two and you're going to regress to age two, then you have to do this with great care. But I would say, if we really are aware what we're aware of is that everything is here right now. All we have to do is choose to become where we want to bring our attention <clears throat> intentionally. So we have to pay attention. So the two-year-old that was traumatized is here right now as a body sensation. So we're not regressing me if I'm the client. We're asking me to become someone who becomes aware of, allows, brings all its attention to, and accepts another, be another being who's here right now as a body sensation. So the traumatized two-year-old is here right now. All we have to do is find the sensation that's associated with them and then choose to bring all our awareness to that sensation to such degree that we become the sensation from the inside out. But the key here is that we're not regressing. All we're doing is we're choosing, right? we're choosing to bring our attention someplace. And because that's the case, really what we are is a witness who's holding someone. And that includes the witness who's holding ourselves in the present moment. So it's not that Andy is doing something. Andy is choosing to align with a witness who is paying attention and is aware, and then is choosing to enroll himself in something where he's not even himself. So what the, the metaphor for me is like if we're an actor and there is a sensation here and we choose to become it, it's like becoming enrolled. It's like playing a role in a play. But it's not who we are. We don't identify with it, even if we are fully enrolled and fully living it. We know that we've chosen to be the role. It's not who we are, even when we are fully immersed in it as a great actor, because we're just playing a role. And because that's the case, when you choose to become the sensation, you don't have to get resource. The resource is the choosing and the witnessing and the holding. It's not you need anything else and you can do the most. You can go the most horrendous places right away with no preparation except for just choosing it. So there's no such thing as regression, right? In this way, there's only presence. There's only awareness and paying attention. 
There's also no such thing as resistance. So some healers say, you know, someone's resisting something. I think that's an impossible idea. You can't resist because everything is just part of the process. Everything is a remembering, you know, so whatever someone says, they can't step outside the process. They can say, you know, uh, I won't do this. And you can say, that's right, and because it's not them. As soon as they become a sensation, they're not, the person who's here isn't the client. They're not even here. They've just become a sensation. It's the sensation that's sharing, not the person who we think is sitting in the seat because they weren't there in the first place. And the last thing to say is there's no such thing as pathology. There's only stories that we haven't discovered yet. So there's no such thing as anything that's irrational. So in certain systems, you might say, you know, someone has an irrational belief, you know, like, oh my God, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. And uh, I'm believing that if I uh, do something wrong, something terrible will happen. So I have to make sure I never make a mistake. But of course, if you were a leader of men in a war and you weren't paying enough attention because you were distracted and you walked them into an ambush, suddenly that which looked like an irrational belief is no longer an irrational belief. It makes total sense. And what I want to say to you is, if we really, really, really took a one down place and didn't judge anything, but say, I have to become aware, I have to be in a place where the reporter is the expert. And if they say a terrible thing will happen, you know, the sky will fall if I don't do everything perfectly. What they could be saying is bombs will fall out of the sky and I may not be paying attention, so a lot of people could die. So again, everything makes sense if you go in with a sense of like wonder and curiosity and a perception of I don't know anything, but I'm willing to discover anything. And of course, that leads to the next thing, which is that all things are possible. There is nothing that's outside of the realm of what could be the story or the cause and what could be the resolution. So it doesn't matter if you believe in ghosts or not. It only matters if a ghost is revealing itself, however you want to understand it. It doesn't matter if you believe in demonic forces or not. All that matters is if there, if life is presenting a demonic force, you just open to it with uh, acceptance. None of this stuff matters. It doesn't matter if you don't believe in other lifetimes, as long as you know that if you find a story in the French Revolution and you're about to be beheaded and you're in front of a crowd of people and uh, you have terror about being in front of a crowd of people and we take care of the story and your terror of being in crowds goes away and your chronic neck pain goes away because you're trying to wrench your neck away from something and your depression goes away because you tell the story right which is i'm weighed down i'm helpless i'm hopeless i can't move and of course we're talking in the literal so we're always sharing our stories with everything we say with everything we do except they're not our stories. We could say we're sharing the stories. They're not our stories. They're the stories that we happen to report. So the next thing to say then is we're all, there's something called multiple personality disorder. I would say we're all multiples. The only question is how good is the container that's holding the multiples? How good is that one who's saying I can, uh, the one who's witnessing all of you and then what is a multiple? A multiple is just someone who is like all the rest of us, multiples, because I think we're all enormous communities, but there's no container. There's no one who's witnessing the whole thing. So different ones come forward at different times, but that's the only difference between someone who has what's called dissociative identity disorder or multiple personality disorder, what it used to be called, and anyone who doesn't. It's just how much witness function do we have? So what I want to say to you here is healing 
is really about being able to open to everything and say yes, including saying yes to no, which is one thing we can say yes to because it's very important to say no as part of our stories. But it's just one more part of the process. So I just wanted to share some of these things with you sort of in an off the top of the head kind of way to think about what some of the consequences are if we really try to find something, uh, our way of understanding that is valid and complete, because it opens to all possibilities. It opens to everything. And it just opens to our saying, we just have to pay attention. And if we pay attention with no judgment, and we just notice what's happening next and say yes, then life will naturally evolve because we won't get in the way. We'll just be willing participants in this amazing journey that we're all taking together. But we all are each other. So, you know, when they say, love thy neighbor as thyself, you really know it, you'd say, well, that just means I'm loving myself on one level because I am my neighbor and my neighbor is me. It's just, we've forgotten. All we have to do is remember. So I wanna thank you for listening to this. It's a different kind of podcast than I've done before, but it just felt, because we just finished our book, called, well, it's going to be called One Hour Miracles. The subtitle though, um, which is what we came up with is uh, called it Change the Story. Not your story, Change the Story. Reauthor your life. If you change the story, you reauthor your life. And then we realize that we are the created and the creator. <clears throat> you know, we're both, we're the creator and the created. And we're all in this wonderful process where we're all authoring together. And then we're all in this wonderful, journey of play together. And that, of course, doesn't mean that we don't have great compassion when there's really something painful that's happening. But we may not say it's fundamentally who we are. We just say it's one more thing we're experiencing. And we have to open to all experience because we want to keep our hearts open to everything. We want to keep our minds open to everything. We want to keep our bodies open to everything because if you can't experience the pain, you can't experience the joy. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And until we meet again, again, my name is Andy Hahn. And our <clears throat> website is lifecenteredtherapy.com. And if you want to reach me, which I always appreciate anyone who writes, my email address is a h a h n a Hahn at lifecenteredtherapy.com. And I would really, really honor anything that any of you want to share about what I've said or anything that touched you or anything you have great disagreements with, anything at all. Because the conversation is what makes us all learn. We all learn with and from each other. So until the next time, I wish you well in your healing and your evolving. Bye.